Jacinto Finito, a conservative lawmaker, resigns after getting caught watching porn in Parliament. France bans the burqa. How would Indonesia react to full face veils? And social media mania, the making of a star who didn't actually sing and was supposed to be guarding you and me. Joining us each week to inform and educate... Or Hayu Saraswati, Sarah, actress and barefoot activist. <laughs> and guest host Yeni Wahid, director of the Wahid Institute, open to carry on the ideals of her late father, Indonesia's fourth president, Abdurrahman Wahid. Welcome, mm -hmm. Yeni. Hot topic Thanks. number one the downfall of lawmaker Adi Finto. The House member was caught on camera looking at pornography on his tablet computer in a plenary session. Not just a glimpse, but long enough for a photographer to snap these photos. Adi Finto was a member of the Prosperous Justice Party, the PKS, which pushed the anti pornography pornography law in 2008, the very same law that has pop singer Adiel sitting in prison for a bedroom video uploaded on the internet. Adi Finto resigned on Monday and his party ordered him to ask God for forgiveness 100 times in 40 days, read the entire Quran in 30 days, and donate money to 60 people. Okay, before we get into the religious... <laughs> Brief, yeah, before we get into the religious aspect of all this, you know, I actually think this was a good example that he set, that it's rare here when a leader actually takes responsibility for his actions. Like in Japan, they always resign, but here they don't. Well, although some people say that it's not enough, you know, as a lawmaker, he has a very uh, high responsibility. What, prison? Responsibility. Go to jail? Be, be prosecuted? It was according to the pornography, entire pornography law, that which he helped which he helped put into. So what's good for the goose is because, as I mentioned, Ariel's now in jail for that law. Yeah, because he's a public figure, people say that, you know, he's set up, uh, he, he's set a bad example for people, you know, uh, and that his actions could influence people, youngsters, and etc. But, I think there's also a public figure yes. because of his profession. You think he should go to jail or be prosecuted? Well, right now they're still going into you know the whole investigation whether or not he's guilty because it depends on whether or not he actually opened it accidentally. However, I think I think it was pretty bad. <laughs> it wasn't. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, well, I'm trying, the I'm trying to be. You know, she's, she's that already that pushing on, so I'm trying to. I mean, you need to get her tablet notebook right here. here. We can tell. Well, I, I don't have I don't have the folders that I've been talking about. No, I didn't say that. No, but anyone with a Let's basic <laughs> basic knowledge of computers knows that he wasn't looking at a link from an email. Come on. Th that's what the reporter, you know, the, 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 the photographer it's said that enough. he. It was clear through those 60 photos that he took that he actually opened it from a folder. Yes. And that was already on his computer. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the fact that he's a public figure, and it happened during the time when they were discussing something very important, which was the, the building of the Adam building. <laughs> the, bu the House of Representatives. Okay, that's that's subject Should we talk about that another time, no, right? We will. Okay. <laughs> now, now, let's be honest. Many people view and enjoy adult-oriented uh, uh, content, oh, really? but should be in the privacy of their homes, right? What does it say about what goes on on the floor of Parliament? Oh, well. I guess they get uh, bored, it must be, or something. Why, what you do you know. mean bored? They should be doing the people's business. Right, and he Absolutely. did say that he's Absolutely. there as a representative of the people, and he's there to fight for people's rights. But it is, the question mark is, then... He was one of those who pushed that anti-pornography yeah, yeah. law. In fact, yeah. the, the conservative cleric, Abu Bakr Bashir, had a comment before his trial earlier this week <laughs> saying that uh, how could he claim to be a Muslim and watch a sex video? It's kind of ironic. Yes, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, it, you mentioned I PKS think, was pushing this law. Right, exactly. And I think what uh, people are fed up with is also the, it's not the act of watching the porn video, no, but it's the, the act of hypocrisy, absolutely. The hypocrisy. I agree with yeah. that. Now, this hurts Parliament, I think, um, as a whole, his party particularly, because of their stance on, on pornography. Now, speaking of parties, now. Yeni, I, I actually want to ask you this. You announced the formation of a new party this past week. Can you give us quick details on why you did that? Well, we haven't announced it yet. Oh. We haven't chosen the name yet. But we are in the process of setting up a new party. Because? Uh, because uh, we feel that we've got a, a sizable um, Followers. Uh, followers, yeah, followers, uh, loyal followers of, of, of my late father, and and uh, they're not going anywhere. I mean, they'd rather not vote if they're not uh, being sort of uh, organized in our own party. So, so for those not so. familiar, your, the present party that your father founded, helped founded, yeah. um, there was a split? There's a split, and, yes. And a split, so you're and taking then, his loyal followers to your own party? Yes. And trying to carry on what your father did? Okay, yes. got it. Back to Adi Finto. <laughs> Adi Finto's exit, let's sum it all up. Foolish or fitting? Yanni? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, 
has to be. He has to resign. Otherwise, yeah. you know, the whole party, the PKS party will suffer okay. because of what he did. So but fitting. I don't think it's enough. Okay, Sarah? Uh, well, obviously it's fitting that he is resigning. Whether or not it's enough, I think it depends on the investigation. Yeah, let's see if they prosecute. That'll be an interesting yes, it test. it will be an interesting Okay, one. talk into will continue shortly. Is the ban of face veils in France a good idea or a bad law? The View from Indonesia, next. This is Talk Indo from Jakarta, hot topic number two, the new ban on full face veils in France. It took effect this past week and there were immediate protests in Paris and other cities. The law does not specifically say Muslims or women or veils in the language, stating it is just illegal to hide the face in public. But it is without doubt aimed at those who follow Islam, the approximately 2,000 women out of 5 million French Muslims. Now you've got both conservative, conservatives and activists saying they will protest French police say the law will be difficult to enforce what is the point well I would like to know exactly first of all I mean well, can you explain let me, okay let me just make it clear yes, let's, let's, let's just, it burqa you know burqa is not uh, something that is um, uh, it's not a religious it's not a religious aspect of Islam burqa is more of a, of a cultural issue and that's oh. from the Middle East from the Middle East yeah. yes so uh, Islam does not oblige the followers the women to cover the face. In fact, the Quran says explicitly that the face should not be covered. That's interesting. So, so what France is doing this, they say, for a number of reasons, security and all, but the main point... Well, if, if, it's, if it's security, Talton, if it's security, then people carrying backpack and all that, and they pose the same threat. Sure, you know, well, no, that's why reason. many people are objecting to this. Yes. But they also say that it's a, it's a symbol of subjugation of women. And, and let, me, let me ask you this, uh, Yanni, if, if a Muslim hu husband yes. orders the wife to wear this, must she do it or be considered a bad Muslim if she doesn't? See, well, this is again it's democracy, and, and uh, you know, if, if she doesn't want to wear it, then of course there are consequences in their relationship, just like any any other issue that that will arise in a relationship. But many women but, say uh, the, the, the the critics say that they they do force women to do it, and women really don't want to do it. Many women around the world are wearing it I because... I think that's, that's most okay. of the sentiments, I think, is that... But there are, is that many, true? there are many other women who are willing to do it because they respect not the husband, but also the father, the culture where they're in, they're from, you know, and that's how they raise from, you know, from, 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 uh, yeah. from very young. I think there's and another side to all of this because there are women who wear the burqa and because who cover they their face in it. because they, they do believe in it and they think that it's their way of protecting themselves from you know, undesirable looks or, you know, hmm. making, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. A subjugation <laughs> of women, I mean, there are many, many ways of subjugating women. But know. this is the most so visible, and that's why they're attacking this. Now, very few women um, in Indonesia wear the full niqab or, or the burqa. Do you think there will be a problem here if it became a trend and we see more full face covering here in this country? I don't think so. I mean, I mean, if you uh, glorify it, you know, I've, what what the uh, French government is doing now, in my in, in, in my opinion, is glorifying the the niqab wearing, the burqa wearing um, issue into something that you know that is minor, uh, become a symbol of resistance. You so know, now more uh, women will do it because they're because yeah. because they're yeah. protesting. Yeah. I think again, back again, when I was there in Switzerland and between France and Switzerland. There is some sort of uh, stigmatism that goes on with uh, peop women wearing the burqa just because they're, especially after 9-11 in America as well, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of like, it scares people. Well, there was a film here recently a couple of months ago about a woman who wore the full niqab and her neighbors objected. Remember that film a couple of months ago? And then they tore it off her head. Yes, and it was, it was kind of a I, yeah, traumatic, I, yeah. traumatic movie, but it yes. talked about uh, here in Indonesia yes. what happened. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think the, the law should be struck down in France, frankly, because yeah. e even the United States, which is not known for its embrace of Islam, mm. um, they says would, that they yeah. would not, they, they support freedom of expression. Yeah, I absolutely. Think. Yeah, absolutely. It's back again to that, that it is freedom yeah. of expression, and unfortunately, this law is making people's choices for people. Absolutely. You know? That's the, the key point. Now, Yenny, you've worn kind of a head covering pretty much most of your adult life. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you do it? Because I respect my uh, culture and you know and, and the environment in in, in, in which uh, uh, sorry the community that we are from, and um, some people think that this is not enough. Some people say that it's 
too much, you know. Then you don't need to do it. But I don't need to do it if I, I don't if have to. Choice. My my sisters don't wear, you know, but my mom does. But it's then, my own choice. Yeah, that, that brings up another, the, you know, the, the choice part, it brings up another point that... Again, we touched on hypocr hypocrisy, hypocrisy beforehand. A lot of people think that by wearing that, you're making a statement of, uh, you know, a, a Muslim woman who's loyal to their, your beliefs. Yeah. And there are so many who wear that and yet do not represent it well in public. You understand? Mm. You know, mm. it's it's kind of like, well, if you're wearing that, then um, why are you holding hands? Why are you kissing in public? Right. It's that kind of well, in, in, in question in, in of Indonesia. what does that represent? In Indonesia, there are cases. There were cases in which the niqab, the burqa, or the the head covering was used to uh, to smuggle things, yeah. you know, to that, hide that, things. That, okay. that's but that's very few. But that has happened. Okay. Yes. yes. The ban on veils in France, good idea or bad law? Bad law for me. Sarah? Bad law. Bad law, agreed. Okay, still more on Talk Indo. We catch up with the guy, the cop, Norman, the lip-syncing gentleman from Gorontalo. How did he become a star? We're glad you're still watching Talk Indo. Hot topic number three, social media mania. Now, we've all seen and heard this guy. He is Norman Kamaru, the police officer from Gorontalo, who lip-synced his way to national fame via YouTube. After initially getting in trouble because he was in uniform and on duty, his superiors took advantage of his pop popularity and allowed him to make appearances on just about every TV station, including this one. You know, at first I didn't think he was great. Um, I figured he'd get reprimanded because police are supposed to be protecting the public, not imitating a Bollywood singer. Why does this kind of thing get so crazy here in Indonesia? Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I cannot answer that. Well, I'm not the one police of those now are under you know very bad press recently because of the so many cases that they, they didn't solve. You know, some cynics would say this is the attempt. Good news. To <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of good news. I don't know news if it's away good from all the bad sides and you know for something more on the lighter side. You know, uh, you know and entertaining police. To, differentiate, to uh, differentiate between him and someone like Justin Bieber, who got famous on YouTube as well. Justin Bieber sings. <laughs> you know, actually sing. But this guy actually can sing also. Yeah, apparently but, but he didn't get, But he wouldn't have gotten famous if he sang in his own voice, believe me. I mean, yeah. because well, he was imitating a very yes. world global phenomenon of Bollywood, right? Yes, and also the yes. uniform helped. Because, you know, the, the irony of some uh, police in uniform singing Bollywood song. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's something funny there's about something. it. However, there's something very not funny about it because we Tax talked about this. Yes, it's like, aren't you supposed to be on duty or something? Okay, I social mean, media now, uh, the larger picture is changing our society. In this case, we see it. Examples, yeah. the uh, politician who was in the airline seat of another passenger. And oh, got tweeted right, and got, you know, yeah. Okay, you can say his name. It's okay. And uh, <laughs> critical Facebook postings have cost people jobs. Now, if the powers that be don't get with all this, like, and again, you brought your notebook uh, mm -hmm. tablet, They'll be left behind. They got to. They got to learn how to use this and not let it be used against them. Are you going to go on Twitter? Is that yeah, what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I admit. I, you still, had, I'm still not on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? You have a Twitter. I'm account? on Twitter. Yep. Yeni Wahid. You know, Rahayu Saraswati. That's right. I think Twitter. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here. Twitter is basically a vanity medium for people to see what others think of them. Is that wrong? Is that a I, well, that's, that's, you know, Twitter is actually a reflection of the kind of, uh, the time that we're in, the, the kind of, you know, time in history that we're in now. You know, everyone wants to get their 15 minutes of fame. But so, well, I mean, do you go on it more to, to send out things or to hear what they're talking about you? I do the letter. Things, I do the letter. Yeah. I used to be the first one, but then I got tired of responding to people who respond to my Twitter all the time. So I just I didn't. I, I do it I not really to respond to people, and I try telling you know anybody who you know says anything to me that you know I'm so sorry if I can't respond to all well, of you. Well, you have 49 million followers, that so that's, funny, a, that's a little different. Yeah. Funny, okay, no, well, 48, 700. <laughs> so there's, there's emails, of course, that's basic. Everyone pretty much has it. Uh, Facebook, kind of, that's common now. And Twitter is, I mean, I'm a little late. Okay, so I'll, I'll join. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm gonna, always said I'm going to count for you. I will. Okay, but what is the next <laughs> thing? I mean, is there something coming up? What is beyond Twitter? Is there anything else? Or are well, we, are we totally Well, connected? I mean, this is, you know, President Obama got elected because of the power of Twitter, one of them, you know. Facebook and, and he was one of the first so Blackberry. It's a very, it's a very powerful tool.
I mean, maybe, uh, you know, like, uh, okay, I'm not, but one of those things that if we were here, we would say Copral or, or Copral, or like yeah. uh, Foursquare, you know, it's straight away you say where you are and people I can meet up. I don't want to know if you're in the restroom or you're having See, me broccoli, broccoli you know? either, yeah. What is it with you and broccoli? I don't know. People are wondering yeah, right. I love that. I well, like but, but if you are just saying that uh, we are eat, um, eating waffles or having coffee, no one will pay attention to you. You've got to be witty. You've got to be smart. You've got to be you know, engaging. An so, yeah, All right. Exactly. Okay. Social media necessity or narcissistic? I think it's a necessity at this point. Okay, Sarah. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. That, 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 that is the actress. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Time to check on what you're all thinking out there. This email from regular viewer Roger in Surabaya. I totally agree with Sarah. If something isn't working properly, fix it. And he's referring to our discussion about airport facilities. Mm -hmm. Roger, write on and keep writing. An SMS from Melissa in Medan. Papa Ron Muller's presence added a great deal of color in your show. And I haven't seen Sarah laughing so hard before. <laughs> I don't yes, think I've Melissa, seen myself laughing. We've enjoyed Ron. <laughs> guest posting last week he made several good moves <laughs> and this Facebook posting from Roswina how about this hot topic South Korea's boy bands imitated by Indonesia do we have any boy bands yes we do oh, we yeah. have many yeah. 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 there is a really yeah. Yeah. but you can't recall their name okay yeah. send, uh, send all your emails with name I'm too and old for boys <laughs> we're in men bands okay send your emails with name and city to talk indo at metrotvnews.com or post a comment on our Facebook page final words Yeni well, I just want to say uh, our condolences here for the passing of Rosian, uh, Rosian Anwar. He's a noted uh, journalist from the era of you know, pre-independence, uh, during the independence, and he's still very active under his, uh, his last day. So it's a big loss for this country. Okay, Sarah, final words? I was recently invited to a radio station to share my passion about human trafficking and my advocacy on climate change as well. You know what, it doesn't take that much to make, you know, our community and the people around us better just speak up and spread the word about the good that is going on in this world more than the bad. Okay, my final words. You know, I've been called stubborn. I think sticking to your position is important, but not in the case of your health. You know, I got a bit of food poisoning the other day and, and planned on recovering naturally. I don't believe in, I just wanted to heal, right? But that didn't happen. I finally, finally went to the doctor after five days of unpleasantness. I should have gone on day one. I will next time. And that is Talk Indo for this week. For Sarah and Yeti, you have a good time? Yes, yes. Come back anytime. Yes. Thank you. I'm Dalton Tanaraka. See you all next time.